So I think before we start, I just want to point out I do not claim to be an electrical expert or have any kind of expert knowledge about any of what I'm about to do. This is how I've done it, this is how it works for me, and this is based on the reading that I've done. So you do so at your own risk. Hey guys, so I got a bunch of messages um, and questions about the combined batteries that I made. Um, and decided I would do a video detailing the process as to how I do it. Uh, I have to give credit to El Guano on RC forums or uh, sorry rcgroups.com uh, who originally posted how he went about doing it, which is how I ended up doing it. Um, now the tools I'm using, obviously the two batteries of exactly the same type, exactly the same capacity and discharge, although you could theoretically, I suppose, use different capacities. Um, I'm, I've got a voltage checker that I just like to use. I'm not even sure if it's 100% of a sane way to test it, but when I'm done, I like to just check that it still reads everything fine. I've got a small pair of scissors that I use to just uh, clip the actual wires. I've got a surgical scalpel or hobby knife. Um, essentially to remove a lot of the packaging and or covering and then also to strip wires. Um, heat shielding, heat shrink, right at the end to actually shrink the whole battery down together. Then I've got a heat gun for the heat shrink. I've got a 40 watt or 45 watt soldering iron for some of the smaller cables and a 100 watt for the larger ones. A third hand it just makes everything much much easier and then obviously the solder. So let's get started. So now the first thing I'm going to do is remove all of the packaging. Carefully. And on these ones, you have to be very careful with lifting the edge of this, what looks like cellophane or sort of metallic, very thin tape. I'll put that aside and I'll keep that. And this tape is a lot easier to lift. Just take a good look at it and see the f last piece of tape to go on. That's the first piece of tape you want to lift. And then keep all of these there. Then we'll separate this piece of <coughs> cardboard cover. Just gently slide underneath it. The uh, adhesive gives way pretty easily, but you obviously don't want to overextend the blade and hit any of the contact points of the wire. That would be bad. And if you lift that side, I don't know if you can see that, you lift that side, you've got a little sort of piece of foam been a decent dancer there. Let's get it all the way around and down. And keep that. Let's clean up any pieces of the tape that are still around. Then what I do is I cut the tape just through here on either side. Now you want to be really really careful that you don't puncture this. If you puncture this it's, it's going to become a fire hazard. So when that lithium hits the air you're in trouble. So <clears throat> these two aluminium plates that essentially just go on either side of the battery um, as protection. I don't use them, you could. So now I'm just going to continue and do the second battery. Now that this battery is done and you can see the 
positive discharge, negative discharge, and all the balance leads. marker and then what I'm essentially doing is basically marking the batteries just so that I know which one I'm dealing with. So number one is the one we're going to keep the leads from and number two is the one that we're going to chop the leads off. So that's uh, oh, and another tool I didn't mention. Essentially just a wire cutter will do. It's, uh, I happen to have my Leatherman handy so what I'm doing is I'm crimping the I'm cutting the battery and I'm cutting it at about that length, I'm just going to strip that off, and then this section is what's going to be soldered to the other battery. Then, what I'll tend to do is just put some insulation tape around that just to be safe. Uh, probably being overly cautious, but I can rather cautious than sorry, right? Okay, so once that's gone, so she's just going to strip this off, so cut through the silicon protection. The and if you look at it like this, what we're going to do is we're going to lift that ca that there, and essentially have it go over like this. So on this side you want to very carefully lift this plastic, don't remove it, just lift it. So what I tend to do is just sort of fold it back over like that, just double up on itself and just press it down for now so it stays out the way. But you're going to need that again afterwards. So what we're going to do is we're going to solder up on this guy and then put these two together like that. Just attach the battery. Sort of just holding it in place roughly so that it doesn't move too much. Got my solder and I've got a soldering iron that's nice and hot. So now just to test that. Yeah, it seems hot enough. That's good. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to heat this guy up quickly and then wick it. So what I'm going to do here is just clean up a little bit of that glue, just so when I solder it we're not going to be melting the glue and we can get a nice strong joint. Well, let's just heat it up first. This is where the 100 watt soldering line makes a massive difference. The previous batteries I did it with a with the smaller solder iron and it just took way too long to get done. And uh, you can see that's a nice strong connection there. So quite happy with that. Then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the negative discharge lead from the battery number two. And we're basically gonna cut it to length to about there. And we're gonna solder up onto this guy. Okay, so let's carry on. What I'm going to do is I'm going to lift this tape. Uh, looks like I'll have to lift the opposite tape first. So 
Is that one's on top. Just get it out the way. And let's lift that guy. All right, so then the same thing as before. Carefully get this out the way. So down like that. Now you can see here you've actually exposed two connectors here. You want to be very, very careful not to cross those two. Or you will short your battery and create lots of spikes and scare the shit out of yourself. We're going for this guy. As you can see here, nice strong bond. We'll take that and we'll push it down over again. All right, now with our smaller soldering iron heating up, we are going to go and cut the balance leads. So now this is why we've labeled the batteries. First battery, you do not want to cut the balance leads on. The one that's actually got the lead coming off of it, you want to keep all of these balance leads on as they are. So if you go over to the other side to battery number two, these are the balance leads you want to cut. And the balance leads you're cutting are the balance lead from the outside cell and the innermost cell. So where your negative balance lead are and your positive balance lead are. The reason for that is that you've already connected the two batteries with the two balance leads that you soldered together. You can also look at it like this. It's the two outermost balance, or the two outermost balance leads on this plug. Going to connect these two guys to their opposite ends. So if you look at the one on the outermost side here, this battery point here, that balance lead is going to go over here to the exact opposite one on that side. It's pretty straightforward, it's quite hard to get it wrong. Now what I tend to do is I tend to do this one first because I find it more finicky. And again, you're going to have to be extra careful that you do not contact that point because it's exposed. Stick that up the way. Measure this up for length. I tend to go under the the uh, cable, thick cable, so that it, when it pulls it doesn't pull against it. See there, that part here where you're moving it across, you want to be very careful you don't touch that. It's quite a risky moment and I should have actually been probably a touch more careful about that. Now we've just got the last one. So I'll just trim it off at the end here and make it easy to work with. <clears throat> now that guy is going to be connected to there. And then, in principle, you're basically done. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use the tape that we saved from before. You did save it, right? And we're going to strap this whole battery back up again. So, I like to start with it going this way. But uh, up to you if you do bottom first or top first, doesn't really matter. Um, I do bottom first just because it keeps it all together quite nicely, I feel. And then I'll go one over and down. 
and then I'll take the second long one from the second battery and I'll go the other way around. And I do it with a bit of tension so that it keeps a nice tight fit. Then what I do is I take the longer ones and I'll run them just around here, around the upper side of it. And then I take some of the medium length ones and I just go that way around, which is probably not entirely necessary, but I like to do it. And then that's the basics. There you have your nicely packaged, neatly wrapped, custom 4400 milliamp per hour battery. That works. This needs a charge. And we can see then that it will fit very nicely into the Phantom with the mod that I've done before. Just like that. And there you go. Voila.